In today's video, we will prove a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Take a minute to read over the learning goal in the scale. Find where you are on the scale before we begin the lesson. We can decide if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram if its sides, angles, and diagonals have certain properties. Remember the properties we talked about before. The same is true and we can use those to prove quadrilaterals parallelograms plus one more. So, a quadrilateral is a parallelogram if both pairs of opposite sides are congruent or if both pairs of opposite angles are congruent or an angle is supplementary to both of its consecutive angles or one pair of opposite sides is both parallel and congruent or if the diagonals bisect each other. If any one of these five things is true, a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Here are three theorems that will help you prove a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Theorem 6-8 states, if both pairs of opposite sides of a quadrilateral are congruent, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Theorem 6-9 states that if an angle of a quadrilateral is supplementary to both of its consecutive angles, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So, if the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B equals 180, and the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle D equals 180, then both B and D are supplementary to angle A. So, the quadrilateral ABCD is a parallelogram. Theorem 610 states, if both pairs of opposite angles of a quadrilateral are congruent, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So if angle A is congruent to angle C, and angle B is congruent to angle D, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. In example one, we will find values for parallelograms. For what value of Y must quadrilateral PQRS be a parallelogram? Since they give us side lengths, we're going to use the property of the sides of the parallelogram to help us out. We know a quadrilateral is a parallelogram if both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. So let's start by finding X by setting the length of segment PQ equal to the length of segment SR. Let's substitute 3X minus 5 in for the length of PQ and 2X plus 1 in for the length of segment SR. We'll subtract 2X from both sides and add 5 to both sides. So X will equal 4. Since we're looking for the value of Y, and we know that the length of segment QR must be congruent to the length of segment PS, then let's substitute 4 in for X. So 6 will equal Y. Pause the video and do you try number 1. For what values of X and Y must quadrilateral PQRS be a parallelogram? Since they give us the angle measures in this quadrilateral, we want to focus on the properties of the angles of parallelograms. We know that opposite angles of a parallelogram are congruent. However, in each of these expressions, we have a y and here we have an x. So we don't want to write an equation with two variables. So let's focus on the property that states consecutive angles of a parallelogram are supplementary. Here our consecutive angles e and h both have y in their expressions. So let's write the equation 3y minus 2 plus y plus 10 equals 180. We'll combine like terms and get 4y plus 8 equals 180. Subtract 8 from both sides for 4y equals 172. Now divide both sides by 4 and y will equal 43. Now we have to find the value for x. Since this angle measure angle H is Y plus 10 and we know that Y is 43 we know that the measure of angle H is 43 plus 10 or 53. We know that opposite angles in a parallelogram are congruent so the measure of angle F will be equal to 53 or the measure of angle H. Since the measure of angle F is 4X plus 13 we can write the equation 4X plus 13 equals 53. Subtract 13 from both sides, divide both sides by 4, and x equals 10. So the values for x and y, x equals 10 and y equals 43. Here are two more theorems 
that will help us prove a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Theorem 611 states that if the diagonals of a quadrilateral bisect each other, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Theorem 612 states that if one pair of opposite sides of a quadrilateral is both congruent and parallel, so it has to be both, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. In example two, we will decide whether a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. In part A, it is given that the length of segment AB is 5, the length of segment CD is 5, and the measure of angle A is 50, and the measure of angle D is 30. We want to prove that quadrilateral ABCD is a parallelogram. Since side AB and side CD are both 5 units long, they are congruent. Since 50 plus 130 equals 180, then angle A and angle D are supplementary. Since they are consecutive, we know that they are also same side interior angles. When same side interior angles are supplementary, we have parallel lines. So now we know that segment AB is parallel to segment CD, in addition to the fact that segment AB is congruent to segment CD. Since segment AB and segment CD are both congruent and parallel, quadrilateral ABCD is a parallelogram. In part B, it is given that segment HI is congruent to segment HK and segment JI is congruent to segment JK. Can we prove that quadrilateral HIJK is a parallelogram? In order to have a parallelogram, we have to have both pairs of opposite sides congruent. Since segment HI is congruent to segment HK, those are consecutive sides, not opposite sides. And the same thing is true with segment JI and segment JK. Since the opposite sides are not congruent, then no, we cannot prove quadrilateral HIJK is a parallelogram. Pause the video and do you try number two. Can you prove the quadrilateral is a parallelogram based on the given information? In part A, it is given that segment EF is congruent to segment GD and that segment DE is parallel to segment FG. Can we prove the quadrilateral DEFG is a parallelogram? Since we only know that one pair of opposite sides, DE and FG, are parallel, and that only one pair of opposite sides, DG and FE, are congruent, we cannot prove that quadrilateral DEFG is a parallelogram. In part B, it is given that angle ALN and angle DN L are congruent, and angle ANL and angle DLN are congruent. Can we prove that quadrilateral LAND is a parallelogram? Because of the parallel symbols, we know that segment AN is parallel to segment DL. Since angle ALN and angle DNL are alternate interior angles that are congruent, we know that segment AL is also parallel to segment DN. Since both pairs of opposite sides are parallel, quadrilateral LAND is a parallelogram. In example three, we will identify parallelograms. A truck sits on a platform of a vehicle lift. Two moving arms move the platform until a mechanic can fit underneath. Why will the truck always remain parallel to the ground as it is lifted? Even though the angles formed by the arms in the platform and the arms in the ground change as the truck is lifted, the length of segment QR and segment PS remain the same. They are both 26 feet long. The length of the arms remain the same as well. They are both 6 feet long. Since both pairs of opposite sides are congruent, then we know we have a parallelogram. If we have a parallelogram, then both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. So no matter where the truck is on the platform 
or whether wherever the platform is, we know that segment QR and segment PS will always be parallel to each other. Pause the video and do you try number three. What is the maximum height the vehicle lift can elevate the truck? Explain. Since the length of segment QP and the length of segment RS, or the arms of the vehicle platform, are 6 feet, the maximum height that the vehicle lift can be raised is 6 feet. That would be when the arms were vertical or perpendicular to the ground. Here's a quick reference for when you need to prove quadrilaterals or parallelograms. If any of these methods are true, the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Now's your chance to see how well you understand the lesson. Pause the video and complete the lesson check. Don't forget to check your answers on the next slide. If you have any questions regarding the lesson check, please be sure to ask me in class. Take another minute to reread the learning goal and the scale. See if you've climbed any higher than where you were before we began the lesson.